One autumn evening, a group of adventurous teenagers decided to test the legends. Sarah, Alex, Emily, and Mark gathered around a campfire, sharing daring stories about the whispering woods. Their laughter was laced with excitement as they concocted a plan to venture into the heart of the forest, determined to uncover its secrets. As the moon hung low in the sky, casting an eerie glow over the woods, the group of friends made their way into the whispering woods. Twisted branches reached out like skeletal fingers, casting long, wavering shadows that seemed to follow their every move. The wind rustled through the leaves, creating an otherworldly symphony that sent shivers down their spines. Deeper they ventured, their flashlights cutting through the darkness like beacons of light. The forest grew denser and the air grew colder, as if the very essence of the woods were attempting to dissuade their exploration. But their curiosity was unyielding, each step fueling a mixture of fear and exhilaration. They stumbled upon an old, decrepit cabin, its windows shattered and its wooden boards warped with age. The air around it seemed to thicken, a suffocating weight that made the teens hesitate. But a strange compulsion drove them forward, drawing them closer to the cabin's gaping entrance. Inside, the air was damp and heavy, the floorboards creaking underfoot. Faint echoes of laughter seemed to linger in the air, whispers of conversations long past. The walls were adorned with faded photographs of people who looked like they belonged to another era. Frozen in time, their eyes seemed to follow the visitors. In the heart of the cabin, they discovered an old journal, its pages yellowed with age. The entries were cryptic, speaking of lost souls and the price of trespassing into the whispering woods. The writing grew more frantic as the pages turned, detailing a descent into madness that ended with the disappearance of the journal's author. A sudden draft extinguished their flashlights, plunging the cabin into darkness. Panic set in as they fumbled to relight them, their breaths ragged and anxious. The air seemed to grow colder, and the whispers that had once been distant now surrounded them. Just as they managed to relight their flashlights, a piercing scream tore through the air. It was a wailing, mournful cry that seemed to echo through the very bones of the forest. The walls of the cabin trembled, and the photograph shook violently. Heart pounding, Sarah shone her light at the images, only to see the figures in the photos contorting and twisting, their eyes empty and hollow. Terror seized them as they fled the cabin, their footsteps echoing through the forest as they raced back the way they had come. The whispers grew louder, indistinct voices mingling with the howling wind. Shadows seemed to stretch and twist, threatening to ensnare them in their grasp. Finally, they burst from the whispering woods, gasping for breath and covered in cold sweat. As they stumbled back into the town, the first light of dawn began to break, casting a gentle glow over the horizon. The forest behind them remained shrouded in darkness, its secrets still intact. From that day on, the four friends carried the memory of the whispering woods with them. A memory of the eerie cabin, the haunting screams, and the sensation of being watched by unseen eyes. And though they vowed never to return, the echoes of that chilling night lingered in their minds, a reminder that some mysteries were best left undisturbed, and some fears were born from truths too terrifying to comprehend. The stories I had heard since childhood about the abandoned estate at the edge of town had always intrigued me. Hollowbrook Manor, they called it, a mansion with a history steeped in tragedy and a reputation for being haunted by more than just memories. With a flashlight in hand and my heart racing, I made my way toward the looming mansion. Its silhouette against the moonlit sky was eerie yet captivating. Each step I took seemed to echo through the empty air, as if the mansion itself were alive and waiting. Inside, the air was thick with the scent of dust and decay. My flashlight's beam revealed ornate wallpaper peeling at the edges, and long-forgotten furniture draped in ghostly sheets. Whispers of the past seemed to linger, carried on the wind that whistled through broken windows. The legend spoke of a haunting melody, a mournful tune that would drift through the mansion on moonlit nights. That melody was what had brought me here, a journalist driven by a need to uncover the truth behind the tales. As I moved deeper into the mansion, the floorboards creaked beneath my feet, a symphony of their own. A chilling breeze brushed against my skin, carrying with it a sensation of being watched. But I pressed on, driven by a mixture of fear and a fascination I couldn't deny. The melody began to weave through the air, a haunting piano tune that sent shivers down my spine. It was both beautiful and unsettling, its mournful notes resonating with an energy that seemed to permeate the very walls around me. Following the sound, I found myself in a grand ballroom, bathed in the dim light of flickering chandeliers. 
There, at the center of the room, stood an untouched grand piano. Its keys moved with an otherworldly grace, the music flowing as if by unseen hands. It was as if the mansion itself was telling a story, one of grief, love, and an eternity of longing. As I hesitantly reached out to touch the keys, the melody intensified, its mournful strains growing more powerful. Shadows danced on the walls, seemingly alive with their own tales to tell. And then before my eyes, a figure materialized, a woman in a flowing white gown, her presence both ethereal and melancholic. It was Isabella, the wife of Victor Hollowbrook, the mansion's original owner. Her eyes held a sadness that tugged at my heart, and without a word she extended a hand toward me. Her gaze seemed to beckon, inviting me to share in the story that had remained untold for so long. Torn between fear and empathy, I took her hand. In an instant, I was transported to a different time, a time when the mansion was alive with music and laughter, and Isabella was the center of Victor's world. But that world was shattered by tragedy, and Isabella's untimely departure left Victor a broken man, his grief consuming him. I felt the weight of their pain as if it were my own, the melody a conduit for their shared sorrow. Isabella's eyes met mine, and in that gaze I understood her message, a plea for release, a yearning for peace. With a deep breath, I closed my eyes and allowed the melody to flow through me. The energy around us intensified and the walls seemed to quiver as if releasing a long-held sigh. The melody swelled to a climax before fading away, leaving a silence that was both profound and calming. When I opened my eyes, the ballroom was empty once more, the mansion quiet as if holding its breath. I felt a sense of closure, as if Isabella's spirit had found the release it had longed for. Leaving the mansion, I walked into the moonlit night, my heart lighter than it had been in years. The legends of Hollowbrook Manor had found resolution in my encounter with the haunting melody. And as I looked back at the mansion one last time, I couldn't help but wonder if the shadows that danced within its walls were truly just memories, or something more, something eternal, whispering through the ages. One rainy afternoon, with the attic's air thick and musty, I found myself standing before the mirror. The light from a single flickering bulb cast eerie shadows around me. I hesitated for a moment, then gazed into the mirror's depths. At first my reflection stared back at me, familiar yet unsettling, but as I continued to gaze, the edges of my reflection seemed to blur, as if the mirror's surface held a secret portal to another realm. I felt a shiver crawl down my spine, an unease settling over me. As I peered closer, my reflection began to change. My eyes, once my own, seemed to darken, holding a malevolent glint. A smirk curled at the corners of my reflection's lips, a sinister imitation of my own expression. Panic surged through me and I tried to tear my gaze away, but it was as though the mirror held me captive. The room around me grew colder, the air heavy with an unexplainable tension. I watched in horror as my reflection began to move, its actions no longer mirroring my own. It reached out a hand, its fingers extending toward the glass, and then with a sudden jolt, its hand pushed through the mirror's surface. I stumbled back, my heart pounding as I watched my reflection step out of the mirror, its movements fluid and unnatural. It stood before me, its eyes fixed on mine, a chilling smile playing on its lips. The doppelganger seemed to exude an energy that sent tremors through the room. What are you? I managed to stammer, my voice barely above a whisper. Its smile widened, and it spoke in a voice that seemed to echo from a distance, as if originating from somewhere far beyond the mirror. I am the reflection you've denied, the darkness you've suppressed. I am the part of you that you've tried to forget. Fear gripped me as I realized the truth. This was my own darkness, my own hidden fears and regrets, given form and voice by the mirror's malevolent magic. What do you want? I demanded, my voice trembling. It reached out a hand its fingers grazing my cheek in a touch that felt both icy and burning. To be acknowledged, it hissed, to be set free. With those words, a surge of energy pulsed through me and I felt my own darkness mingling with the reflection's malevolence. The room seemed to shift, its walls melting away, leaving us suspended in a void of shadows. I had to confront my own fears, my own regrets, in order to regain control. The battle was internal, a struggle to accept the darker aspects of myself that I had buried deep within. As I faced those truths, the reflection's malevolence began to waver, its form growing more translucent. Finally, with a burst of determination, I embraced my own darkness, 
acknowledging it as a part of me. The reflection let out a haunting scream, its form dissolving into fragments of darkness. The room began to solidify around me, and I found myself standing alone before the mirror. Gasping for breath, I stumbled back from the mirror's surface. The attic was once again bathed in the feeble light of the single bulb. The mirror looked no different than before, its surface calm and unassuming. But the experience had left me shaken, a reminder that our inner demons can never truly be ignored. As I left the attic, I couldn't shake the feeling that the mirror's malevolent magic still lingered, waiting for another curious soul to unleash the darkness within. And I knew, deep down, that the reflection's sinister smile would haunt my thoughts for years to come, a constant reminder that the line between reality and our own hidden horrors is often thinner than we dare to believe.